G'day guys, my name's Jack Manning Bancroft and I'm the CEO of an organisation called AIM that supports Indigenous high school kids to strive for a future filled with hope, aspiration and ultimately success. Now many of us know that this is not the normal future facing an Aboriginal child born in Australia today. For Aboriginal people, we are often overrepresented in custody and tick every box of disadvantage. But with great challenges come great opportunities. We now have a very special chance to reimagine a future for our Indigenous young people. A future filled with positivity and not despair. A future focused on prevention and not cure. And hopefully a future that has a funding model that supports early intervention to get in there and provide a platform for Indigenous young people to be able to choose a future filled with success, hope and aspiration like we want for any Australian child. Now I'm very, very lucky that I now have the opportunity to introduce three young people who are living that story, who are out there trying to change those statistics. And you're now going to get the chance to hear from three very successful and inspiring young Indigenous people. Hi, I'm Jeff. Hi, I'm Ray. Hi, I'm Jay. And, and this, this is, is our story. Challenges for me growing up was, um, you know, I used to move around a lot from place to place, never actually adapt to one place. And my brother making new friends is really hard for us, you know. And, um, when I was very young, I was with Docs and they moved me away from my family, so that was very hard on me, very challenging. You know, I used to stay with my brother or sister much, and you know, that transition to high school was very tough on me. I used to get picked a lot, picked on a lot, and you know, just breaking down. It's very challenging, one big roller coaster. Some of the challenges I faced growing up was not having a mum around, and being a girl, I think every girl needs their mum. Um, also, probably through school and high school, um, first of the people, they had bad perceptions of Aboriginal people, like they will never go anywhere in life or a lot of them just have babies for the benefits and stuff like that. Um, also, I probably made some choices that weren't so good that affected my family and my friends. The challenge I faced was like hanging around the wrong crowd, like not going to school, plus I was moving a lot, that's with dogs and being separated from my family. My trick of a change was, um, you know, finally moving in with my grandparents and finding that sustainability and, you know, really good change and, like, helping me out, staying in the one spot with all my mates and stuff. And, you know, once I moved out there, I kind of hooked up with um, the Cool Kids Club and the LARPA Bombers, both Youth Havens, and, um, you know, they helped me change a lot and, you know, grow more maturity and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I've been doing that for a couple of years. And once I switched from primary school to high school, um, kind of graduated from Cool Kids to a switch leader. With, um, yeah, so that was pretty good. And uh, John O'Carey helped me out, and it gave me the opportunity to represent my community in um, the Blank Page Summit over in the Kimberleys, and it was a really big change for me and made me realise who I am and stuff and you know, it's pretty good. I got to represent my community and I was very proud of myself. My trigger for change is probably when I would come home after three days of being out and see my dad and he would look really stressed and sick and worried. So I guess I thought about my dad. Um, also probably losing a lot of my friends to going to custody or getting in trouble with police. Um, also I never had enough money to do the things I wanted to do. Um, and then I went on a program called White Line and they helped me mature a lot and get a job. Trigger for change was like going to Palm and meeting up with the Weave, with Weave and that was getting me into like building outdoor wrecks like caving. And then I wanted to get like skills for work and play footy. My hopes for the future is that I can become a great role model and leader in my own life and in my community. You know, it'd be a really big achievement. And I'm, you know, finishing high school. That'd be really fun. Like, be good, great, and I'm, you know, getting a good job, earn great money, get a good education with that, and you know, just having a family, being a good role model for my son, and you know my community as well. Hopefully in the future I can have a career within the government sector 
and I want to have a high up position so I can be an Indigenous representative. Also, I hope. Uh, I hope that sharing my story will encourage the media to produce other positive stories about Aboriginal youth. And also, um, I want to prove not only to myself but to others that you can, like, if you work hard, you can go anywhere and own your own home and have a good future. My hopes for the future is getting into NRL and working in construction and have a family. We're determined to prove society wrong. We're not going to be another statistic. We're going to be good role models for our people. The Justice Reinvestment Campaign for Aboriginal Young People aims to reduce the over-representation of young Aboriginal people held in custody in New South Wales. It aims to shift the spending that is currently allocated towards prisons towards community-based programs, the ones of the like that supported Jess, Trey or Raymond. Programs that build confidence and self-esteem, that provide education and employment. Programs that change lives. Programs that would cost the government, on average, $10,000 per participant, as opposed to the current cost of $240,000 that it costs per detainee in custody. Justice reinvestment in New South Wales is a good investment. It's an investment that makes sense and it's an investment that will help us build our young Indigenous people to become Australia's future leaders.